Hello and welcome to the first of our new series of video podcasts on medicine safety. My name is Alan Copley, I'm one of the Trust's pharmacists and the medication safety officer for the organisation. I'm joined today by our medical director, Dr Kevin Cleary. So the aim of these podcasts is really to try and share learning about medicine safety across the organisation. And the first topic that we've decided to speak about today is one of our riskier areas here, and that is rapid tranquilization. Now, NICE have actually recently published some updated guidelines on how to use medication for rapid tranquilization. And so we're currently reviewing our own trust policies in light of that guidance. But I know that in the meantime, there was one particular area of the new NICE guidance that you wanted to remind staff about, Kevin. Would you mind telling us what that is? So today I'd like to talk to our staff about how we monitor the patients who've had rapid tranquilization. Okay, and is the monitoring following rapid tranquilization something that we do quite badly in the trust? No, I don't think we do quite badly, but it's very important that it's done 100% of the time. And we know from um, incidents that have happened that that's not the case. And so today I would like to talk about how we can make sure that that happens for all our patients all of the time. NICE are particularly concerned about monitoring patients who have been administered intramuscular medication for rapid tranquilization. is that right? That's correct. So NICE are really now saying that those patients who've had IM medication should be treated as the patients who've had rapid tranquilization. Yeah. Um, it's critically important that this is done uh, as laid out in the guidance because we want to keep our patients safe. If you don't follow the guidance, our patients aren't safe. It's trust policy uh, and it's best practice nationally. NICE also mention an issue around increasing the monitoring for patients who are drowsy or fall asleep. Okay, and that's certainly the case. So and we know from some of the incidents which have happened in the organisation that people are slightly confused about this. So I really want to be quite clear. If someone is falling asleep, that is a sign that their central nervous system is being depressed and that puts them at particular risk. Um, so their, their breathing rate becomes less uh, and their circulation can be affected. And obviously if you're not breathing and your blood's not circulating correctly, you can get damage to your brain, damage to your heart and damage to other tissues and ultimately could risk you sort of dying as a result. So during the time when the patient's becoming more sedated uh, and sleepy, that's the time where we really need to do uh, the more detailed observations. So when someone's drowsy or falls asleep, that should prompt more concern about their well-being rather than less? Absolutely, yes. Even though we, the whole reason for tranquilizing someone is that you are wanting to make them calmer uh, and sleepier, yes, that's the time at which they're at most risk. So we just need to make sure the monitoring is being done, especially for those patients. Yeah. And what about someone who's refusing physical observation? So obviously that makes it much more difficult for staff, but there are still things that you can monitor from a distance. So the respiratory rate, you can see the movement of their chest, uh, you can measure their, their level of sedation, you can see how sleepy they are. Those two things are very, very important. Uh, it may, might be that initially you can't move in and take a pulse and blood pressure, but once they're, once they're more calm, then you can. Yeah, and obviously important to document these things all the time yes. as well. Yeah. So you need to document it so that everyone else knows uh, precisely what's happening and can plan their care in that way. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. So we recently issued a clinical alert about this topic, so please do read that. We all have a responsibility to help keep our service users safe by making sure that we do this monitoring properly. Thank you for watching.